Okay, everyone. Today, I wanted to talk to you about angle addition formulas. Uh, in particular, if you know uh, you've got an angle theta, another angle phi, and you know the sine and the cosine of those two angles, can you find the sine of the angle that you get from adding the two angles together? In other words, what is the sine of theta plus phi? This is a formula we all memorize in school, um, but usually we don't know why we're memorizing it or what it's useful for other than the trig identities they give us to solve after that. Um, and we also don't necessarily know how you would arrive at that formula. Um, but historically, we've seen that, that this is, was super important in being able to create tables of sines and chords of different angles uh, back in an age before we had you know, machines to do these kinds of calculations for us. Um, and so this, this is sort of the first intellectual tool you really have to get anywhere from just knowing the signs of easy angles um, to being able to make such a table. Now, also historically, the story is sort of reversed in that people weren't talking about uh, the signs of angles. Uh, angles weren't the, the sort of centerpiece of trigonometry. The word trigonometry didn't exist, um, and, and people were finding chords instead of signs. But mathematically, it comes down to the same thing. And so for us, sort of reimagining how these things were created, it, it still helps to be able to try and look at how you could go from knowing the signs of a couple angles to knowing the signs of some more angles. And, and sort of this is the first tool in the tool belt. Um, so let's, let's start simply. Uh, let's say I've got one angle, and we'll call that theta. So right there, there's theta. We usually draw it in a unit circle. So a, a right triangle has a hypotenuse of one, in which case this horizontal piece is the cosine of that angle, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the vertical component is the sine of theta. Um, so if we want to figure out theta plus phi, well, we just sort of add the phi angle on here. Um, and the easiest thing I can think to do is, is to draw a right angle triangle like that. So that, that comes down there. Now I'd like, I know that, let's see, that, that maybe uh, this has something to do with the sine of phi, maybe that has something to do with the cosine of phi, except it's not quite there because this is one, and this is not necessarily one, um, because I've drawn that triangle to, to have a base that coincides with the hypotenuse of the earlier triangle. What I do know, though, is that if I drop this angle here, or this, this line here as a vertical, makes a right triangle, I do know that, that this entire vertical, uh, there's some relationship to the sine of theta plus phi. In particular, if I give this the name x because I don't know what it is, and I'm going to give that the name y because I don't know what it is, and I'm going to draw one more line in here, I'm going to draw in that, which gives me one more unknown z. I know that this vertical as a whole is sine theta plus z, and that that uh, opposite side divided by the hypotenuse is going to be the sine of theta plus phi. So if I can figure out what z is and what x is, and along the way, in order to be able to do that, I'm going to figure out what y is, I'll have my angle addition formula. Um, now, one of the things that's important to keep track of here is, uh, since we're dropped into the middle of this problem, it might be hard to remember what are the things that you are known and what are the things that are unknown. Essentially, uh, the idea is that I know what the sine of theta is. I know what the cosine of theta is. I know what the sine and cosine of phi are as well. So those are the knowns. Um, and in general, this is my big unknown, and these are some intermediary unknowns. Um, and so keeping track of that helps me remember, you know, sort of helps it from feeling like alphabet soup. So let's get started here. Maybe let's take a look at this weird triangle that I drew with phi in it first. Um, and I'll draw it over here. Maybe I can use that to figure out what x and y are. So I'm going to draw it sort of on its side so it's a little bit easier to see in the usual format. This spot down here is 1 because I drew it on top of the hypotenuse for theta. This is phi, uh, and then this is x, and this is y. 
So the cosine of phi is 1 over x. And I can rewrite that as x equals 1 over cosine of phi. And this, this allows me to solve for x in terms of something I'm supposedly, uh, I know. Um, and similarly, the sine of phi being opposite over the hypotenuse is y over x, meaning that y is x times the sine of phi. And I know what x is, so I can fill that in too. Um, so y is equal to the sine of phi over cosine of phi. So far, so good. I actually have found x and y in terms of uh, things that I get to things that I get to claim that I know. And in the situation where this angle formula would actually be useful, you do know. Um, so now the question is, can I also find z? Because if I can find z, I can plug into this thing and, and I know everything. Um, now it seems like at first that this triangle up here that has z in it is a little bit mysterious, but if I sort of follow the trail of breadcrumbs, I can find that, that it's actually a, a very familiar triangle. Um, so let's start here down where theta is. This angle, uh, the third angle in this small triangle we've got here, I'm going to call theta prime, meaning that it's the complement of theta. If I put theta and theta prime together, I get 90 degrees or I get a right angle because a triangle is made out of two right angles. Um, now, if I follow that up here, vertical angle theorem tells me that vertical angles are equal. And so this one has to be theta prime two. And then I have a right angle here. And so this small triangle is made up of theta prime and a right angle and a theta. But then this angle is a right angle altogether, and so it's made up of a theta and a theta prime as well, meaning that this angle over here is theta. So what that allows me to do over here then is to find z by drawing this triangle and figuring out its sine and cosines. Um, so let me draw it sideways so it's a little bit easier to see because it's the way we're used to looking at these things. So there's my right angle, there's theta, and the short side here is z, and then y is the hypotenuse. So if I'm looking to solve uh, for z, I can notice that uh, the cosine of z, or the cosine of theta, is equal to z over y, adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, and so this allows me to solve for z as y times the cosine of theta, and then if I plug in what I know that y is, um, I'm going to get sine of phi um, cosine of theta divided by cosine of phi. Oops. All right. So that's what z is. And now if I come back to here, sine of theta plus phi is, is going to be this. And I know what z is. I know what x is. So hopefully all I've got now is a little bit of algebra. Um, I'll erase some things to give myself some room. Maybe I'll erase this. Uh, let's do remember the x equals 1 over cosine phi. And let's remember that z equals sine of phi cosine theta over cosine of phi, and then we can give ourselves some space. All right, so the sine of theta plus phi is equal to the sine of theta plus z, so plus this one, sine phi cos theta over cos phi, and then it's going to be divided by x. So this whole thing divided by 1 over cosine phi. Um, and dividing by the fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal, 
So I'm going to multiply this whole thing by cosine phi. Here I get sine theta cos phi. And then here the cosine phi cancels and I get sine phi cosine theta. And it's been a while since I was asked to remember these formulas in trig class, but I think that's the formula we're looking for. The sine of theta plus phi is equal to sine of theta cosine of phi plus sine of phi cosine of theta. So uh, from there, we could also probably figure out, I bet you're imagining, uh, the, the cosine. Doesn't look like it'd be too hard to figure out. Probably can figure that out from the same picture. And certainly, um, knowing about the parity of the sine and cosine functions, we could figure out an angle subtraction formula from there with just a little bit of algebra. Uh, I hope this has been helpful and that the angle addition formula is not as much of a mystery as it once was. And I'll talk to you again soon.